Building a gaming setup that allows you to stream and record your gameplay with the face cam can seem like it requires a multitude of pieces connected to your computer in order for it to work properly, but it's actually a lot easier than you might believe. So in this video, we're gonna incorporate the products and software that are essential for getting a live streaming and recording gaming setup up and running in great quality. And just to prove to you that this can work no matter the operating system, we're gonna be doing this on a Mac. Here I have a PS5 gaming setup with just a console, a Philips 4K monitor, and a wireless Arctis Nova Pro gaming headset with a DAC. The Mac we're gonna be using to connect the PS5 is a 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max with one terabyte of SSD storage and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now just because I'm doing this on a pretty beefy configuration doesn't mean that you can't do this on a lower configured machine. If you have any computer with at least a quad core processor in it or better, you'll be able to live stream or record using that machine. Of course, if you have a newer, more powerful CPU or even dedicated graphics on your computer, your performance and your quality will even be greater. The next thing we're gonna add to the setup is an Elgato HD60X capture card. This device will allow us to play our games in up to 4K 60 hertz or even 2K at 120 hertz. There are plenty of capture cards out there that are similar to this device. This just isn't the only one, but they're all set up in a very, very similar way. Before I do anything with this capture card, I'm making sure that HDCP in my system HDMI settings is disabled. If this is on, I'll just have a black screen and I'm not going to be able to record or see anything. To set up this device, I needed one HDMI cable to be plugged into the HDMI in slot, which would be plugged into my PlayStation. I'm going to leverage the HDMI out port on the capture card to output to the monitor that I'm displaying to. For my MacBook to pull in the HDMI feed that the capture card is reading, I need to plug in a USB-C to USB USB-C cable. In this case, I'm using the Godspin Super Speed cable, so that way I can plug that into the capture card, and then the other end of that would be directly connected to my Mac. Now, one other cable I'm adding to this capture card, and this might come as a complete shock but I'm adding the Elgato Chatlink Pro cable. Why? Because I'm using this wireless headset. So by plugging one end of the Elgato Chatlink cable into the line out port of the game deck and then plugging the other side of that cable into the capture card, this will essentially forward all of the audio that the game deck is recording and push it to the capture card, which can then go to my computer for recording. Now you will need to do some things on the software side in order for the audio to actually be picked up, but we'll cover that in just a moment. Something else I did notice after hooking this capture card up was that my screen looked a little hazy or grayish. So to fix this, I needed to go to my screen in video settings, go to HDR, and then turn that off. If you have an HDR monitor, then you wouldn't have to do this. The next thing to add to this setup was the Insta 360 link webcam as we'll be leveraging this for our face cam, but we also need a way to be heard through our commentary. So here we have an Audio-Technica AT2020 USB-X cardioid condenser USB microphone. When you have this microphone plugged in, it illuminates a nice blue light within the microphone itself. And if you click the little touch button on the front of the microphone, it'll turn red, meaning that your audio is muted. Any mic with a mute function, I love. Now, when we're gaming in a dark room or especially at night, time, we don't want to be hidden in the shadows. So we're going to need to add a light to this setup. So here we have a UB size 10 inch ring light. And then to top it all off, we're going to be sitting for hours at a time. So why not get a gaming chair? The one I have here is from Killabee. It's made out of memory foam, so it's pretty comfortable and you'll be able to last a long time. That's right. A long time. What you see now is the Streamlabs desktop app for Mac. And if we rewind a little bit here, okay, stop. In the gameplay scene I set up here, I can add my game source by just adding a video capture device and then selecting the capture card in the dropdown. But what about for the game audio? Well, on macOS, the HD60X capture card has previously only worked if you pass the audio over HDMI. But as you saw in our hardware setup, we were using the chat link cable to pull the audio from the game deck. So luckily on the Elgato downloads page, you can get the capture device utility software, which will allow you to switch the capture card audio from HDMI to analog. So that way the chat link cable can be accepted. After making that change, I can head over back to Streamlabs and add the capture card audio as its own audio input source. But I encountered a problem as soon as I put this wireless headset back 
back on. The audio stopped coming through Streamlabs and I could only hear it in the headset. So on the game deck, using its controls, I was able to go to the line out feature of this device and then turn on the streaming function. That way I could control the full audio mix that was being outputted from the line out port. The volume adjustment in the middle is for the game audio and then the volume adjustment on the right is for your microphone audio from the headset. Yes, the headset. All to the capture card while hearing it at the same time. And this is my microphone audio with the game audio all in one source. How wild is that? And you know what, to add to the insanity, I didn't even mention that you can use the Bluetooth features of this headset to listen to your PC audio while hearing your PS5 audio at the same time and it's all recorded. Wow. The next thing we need to add is our face cam. To do this, we just add another video capture device source, select the webcam, resize it to a good position. I also wanted to add in a nice face cam overlay to this scene. And with this added, the face cam just needed some small adjustments to fit perfectly. Next, if we wanna use the USB microphone instead of the microphone on the headset, we can double check the primary Streamlabs audio settings and then make sure that the microphone is selected in the dropdown list. Lastly, we can leverage the Streamlabs Control Mobile app to control functions in the Streamlabs desktop application on our computer wirelessly. At this point, this setup is ready for prime time. We can go live or start recording. You know, I'm honestly pretty proud of myself. I'm finally playing something else other than Fortnite or Call of Duty. Playing some Last of Us here, just so you can get a feel for what the gameplay looks like. This is just early on in the game anyway, so don't worry about spoilers or anything like that. But this is what you can expect. with everything set up. Oh God, jeez, <laughs> that scared the crap out of me, dog. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, just your daily heart attack. Look at all the fungus. There can't be anything good down there. Uh oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, I'm not showing anything else. The links to all the products and software that I showcased in this video will be in the description below. Check out this video here if you wanna learn more about Streamlabs Desktop. With that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.